Here's another edition of what it's like to go to war. Over the last couple of weeks, I've been talking to you about fear and about the intense fear that war is going to bring. In many cases, fear unlike anything you'll ever experience in the rest of your life because of how serious and how deadly war is. War is like getting a cancer diagnosis every time that you roll out of the gate. Well, today I want to talk to you a little bit about the fear of the enemy. Now, the United States military, the NATO forces, the coalition teams that I've had a chance to be part of, those are some of the most talented, most disciplined, most fit, most technologically advanced military forces ever to be put on the battlefield anytime in human history, meaning they have a huge advantage on the battlefield. But even with all of that stuff in your favor, it doesn't remove the fear of the enemy. For me, one of the most intense moments of fear of the enemy, this happened throughout all of my combat tours in all of those combat deployments. But the most intense moments of fear was when I was going right back into the same city streets that I had just been shot to pieces in, that guys had been killed instantly around me and the vehicles had been shot up. And I remember thinking, I'm part of the most disciplined, most talented, most technologically advanced fighting force on the planet. But at the end of the day, the math has a vote. And by math, what I mean is when you're going out into an area with just a couple of dozen of the most talented warriors on the planet, if there is hundreds or thousands of enemy that you're fighting against, it doesn't matter how good your technology is. It doesn't matter how fit you are. It doesn't matter how amazing your equipment is. That kind of math is going to give you the same results every time. And I think there's something natural. I'll even take it a step further. I think there's something healthy in a healthy fear of the enemy. Notice I just put quotes around healthy because I do think that you can get an unhealthy fear of the enemy. Generals, political leaders that were frozen in fear because of the consequences of failing a battle, many times they failed to seize on a key moment. They failed to turn the tide. They failed to take the initiative and their failures led to many, many more dead and months of protracted fighting. And it was the paralyzing fear of the enemy that did that. But I do think there should be a healthy fear of the enemy. See, I think you should never forget how serious this fight is. I don't think you should ever forget that somebody's going to live and somebody's going to die. And I should respect, this is what I mean by healthy fear. I should respect the enemy, even if they don't have my training, even if they don't have my tactics, even if they don't have my equipment, I should respect them and their will to fight and the will to win. So I want you to get comfortable. I realize this is a very difficult thing to accept. I really believe every warrior is going to have to get comfortable with a healthy degree of fear of the enemy if you want to be able to perform at your best on the battlefield. The dilemma is don't get so comfortable with fear that you get complacent from the enemy and don't get so overwhelmed by fear that you get paralyzed by the fear of the enemy. Somewhere in the middle is the sweet spot of respecting your enemy, having a healthy fear of your enemy, not complacent, but not paralyzed by that fear. Because I don't know of a warrior that's ever gone to combat that didn't have some degree of fear of the enemy. So just a couple of thoughts for you on this little video about what it's like to go to war. See you next time.